Jesus would drink the cup that the Father had given him to drink. The same cup that Jesus prayed about during his prayer in Gethsemane. A cup that he prayed would pass from him if there was any other way, but a cup that he told the Father he would willingly willingly receive in submission to his will. The cup of God's wrath for sin that would be poured out on Jesus at the cross. This, This is a terrible cup that Jesus was about to drink. It's the cup of God's fury, according to Revelation chapter 14. It's a cup from which all the unrighteous will drink, according to Psalm 75. It's a cup of shame and utter disgrace, according to Habakkuk 2. It's a cup that leads to death, according to Jeremiah 25. That's the cup that Jesus came to drink for sinners like you and me. Judas and those who were with him had accomplished their mission. Peter had failed to prevent them from it. But through it all, Jesus was in control, carrying out the Father's mission to drink the cup of wrath that you and I should rightfully drink, the cup of God's fury. And in doing so, Jesus, who knew no sin, became sin for us. He took our shame upon himself. In utter disgrace, he would hang upon a Roman cross and die for the sins of his people. Now, Jesus could have avoided all of that, but he didn't. He, he endured it all. Jesus endured the cup of wrath so that you and I could be forgiven of our sins and reconciled to God. My friend, if you are here this morning, if you are not trusting in him alone for the forgiveness of your sins, then the Bible says that you are an object of God's wrath. The Bible also says that doesn't have to be the case. God is not just a God of wrath. This isn't a dualistic God. It's a God of wrath in the Old Testament and a God of love in the New Testament. It's the same. It's one and the same God. The same God that is spoken of as as a God of wrath is a God of love who sent his son to drink the cup of wrath for you and I. God has made it possible for your rap sheet to be wiped clean to be clothed in the righteousness of Jesus and called a child of God, to have an inheritance and the promise of eternal life in his presence forevermore. And he's done that by sending his son in love. 